Can anybody hear me? Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, I don't know how many minutes I have, but actually, to you know, let you guys be mentally prepared, I have a lot to talk about. And um, the last time I spoke to a programmer, a very senior programmer, after the end of the presentation, he didn't know what I was talking. So just to set the right mindset, this is a bit very geeky, really very geeky. Okay, so. Uh, <clears throat> not going to waste much time, so let me start. <clears throat> okay, oh yeah, I forgot. Um, how many of you guys are here because you don't know what is a CMS? Just hands up. So everybody knows what is a CMS, right? But uh, anybody who don't use a CMS at all right now? Okay, one guy, good. So, <clears throat> um, May I know why you don't use a CMS? Sorry, just a PHP framework. PHP framework. Okay, great. Actually, uh, a CMS also uses a framework. So it just kind of like makes your life easier. I've been using like a lot of uh, CMS all over the world from open source to those kind of enterprise CMS. And whatever CMS I use, right, I always find that there is something that I wish that functionality will have been there and and then you know but it's never there lah. so I, I waited for very long but you know it's never happening so I decided hey why not just write one myself but the more I write right the more I realize it's actually very tedious and you know it's um, very challenging so okay <clears throat> um, let me just start with um, okay firstly you know you may ask me why write a CMS right I mean there's so many in the market well, the answer is because that um, it's kind of like, um, you know, for example, some, some CMS right, are very like slow and I mean like they're very bulky and it's very hard to update the, all the code and how to manage it, you know, in a kind of a modular approach. So all these gives, gives me, raise the questions that, you know, why there isn't one in the market. So I decided to go ahead and show you guys what I've done. Okay, um, I have a video first. Let me just, you know, I'm not going to run through like a normal. Um... Okay, let me just run the video first. Uh, so it's not so quiet. Okay, hang on. Uh. This, this video is special one. I need to actually control it. Hang on. Ready? Oh shit, no sound. <laughs> Where can I get the sound? Okay, do you have a speaker or something? Unless you guys want to watch silent movie, there's subtitle, but you know, it's going to be a bit sad that there's no um, sound. Switch the audio to the... Audio. How, how do I do that? Oh, this one is it? Yeah. Sorry, my bad. Powering on. Welcome to it's, so I don't need speaker already, right? Try again. Okay, way. okay, hang on. Oh, it's not even running. Can you plug it? I have a speaker. It's quite loud. No, 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 wait, wait. I'm trying to figure out. Oh my gosh. There is sound, but I couldn't hear it. It was on the other side. Oh, okay. It's coming out from somewhere. No, no, it's, not, it's too soft, right? Is it coming out from here? No, um, <coughs> no, 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 no. Just the speaker here. Uh, ah, this one, the headphone. Yeah. Right. Okay. You try to avoid your sound speaker so out. Speaker. Yeah, I said that already. Thanks. Okay, uh, I'm gonna start. Oh, you need to set the sound to here. Sorry. Huh? What? What do you mean? Because the sound is also going through HDMI. Oh, okay, sorry. It's okay. It's okay. <coughs> you try again? Okay. This is 
Bob, a hardworking programmer. He works from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. every day. He seems stressfully busy, though. This is Judy, the designer. She does the graphics and content. And she seems worn out day in and day out. With over 20 daily tasks, they are overloaded with tedious work. The challenge that Bob faced are many. For Judy, her challenge is not any better. Now they found a solution. The solution has solved Bob's problems and helped Judy greatly in her work. Bob's daily task is simplified. Judy finds better editing and content control. The solution has allowed for better work collaboration. So now they have a happier work life together. Okay, so this video is actually about uh, using like, you know, this kind of CMS to make their work life better. And how does it make it better? We, we are looking into like improving workflow and con uh, content control. So uh, I'm just going to show you how the CMS works now. This, this is the geeky part, okay? So <clears throat> um, normally, you know, when you, you come to a website and you want to we all do content updating, right? It can be quite a daunting task because you, you know, example, if you just want to change, sometimes, you know, it's, it's something like, if you want to change certain parts of the, of the content, right? You just don't know where to look for the code. You know, sometimes if you have, like you're talking about like 100 over pages, you, you need to find an easier way to do it. So, okay. This CMS, right, will let you actually uh, enable live editing. So I go to this setting. Oh, sorry, not here. Okay, so I click on this button. I'm not sure you can see this. It's, uh, it says enable live editor, okay? I click this and then I save. Okay, as you can see now, there is on the top right, there is a toolbar. So this toolbar, right, is to allow you to see what are the components that make up this page itself. So when I mouse over here, I can see all these things here. And all these are the parts of the components, right, that make up this page. And when I mouse over, right, I can actually, you can actually scroll to the, to the location of all these things. Huh? Okay, some of them are invisible, so they will not scroll to it. But you see, if, if I want, want to change this, right, if I click this, then the editor will actually show up. But this editor um, is actually a lot more intuitive, but um, pardon, because there's a cache right now, I can't show the proper version. And I'm just in, in the... Because of the time constraint, I'm not going to, you know, fix this on the spot here. But, okay, so what if, what if you don't know which, which part of this component it belongs to, right? Um, not to worry, you can actually just mouse over, right, and just double-click this, the area that changes color. And there you can see here, it's supposed to be um, the actual preview of the content, but, you know, <clears throat> there's just some technical constraint right now. So... Uh, by the way, there's no internet, so I can't show you. Actually, they're supposed to like show the YouTube video here, but it, it can't show up because um, you know there's no internet. Okay, so um, what about like you know if you <coughs> if you want to change specific code right inside, maybe somewhere that you have no idea where it is, right? And it's not part of the component. So, example, what, what if I want to change this all rights reserve? I, you know, if in certain CMS, you actually would realize it's very daunting to just change this, and it gets very frustrating. So how do I actually do it here? Well, it's actually quite, quite straightforward. So I click under search, and I click body, then I click I paste in the text, then I search. You see, automatically it brings me to where I want to edit. 
this is the editor I'm talking about that it should have loaded just now and show you the actual preview of the content but it didn't happen because of some caching of uh, the older file so this is the correct version <coughs> um, okay so you see I can actually write click plain plain text so I can actually view the source itself now a lot of CMS in the market right when you want to edit the source right it's just frustrating they won't let you you're just stuck with whatever they give you and it's all usually just you know those kind of text input that's all but this one if you're a programmer you know what I mean you you feel very happy because you are freed from the kind of constraint and so but then you know you may be not happy that why is it that it's you know so plain colored not to worry you can always have a fancy you know in um, HTML coding color syntax so everything is brilliant again you know in a we, we programmer some programmers like colorful text so this is like you know just up the your, your editing your code but you know you know you, you sometimes you like if you use Dreamweaver or you know JetBrains whatever editor you have you, you know that you want to see the change in real time because you know as you change the code uh, you want to see how it looks like if it breaks or whatever <coughs> um, oh yeah by the way of course you can change to whatever other coding that suits you and believe me some programmers use they have prefer just black text no co colors you know okay so you can actually click split view so you know as you change the code you can live preview here but it's a bit you know if you have a small screen like me then you would be set that you cannot see both at the same time right but not to worry you can always change to okay you can always change to this it's the view that lets you change the code and see it in at the same time you know whatever you change here <coughs> okay so there are like so what if I want to see how it looks like right I can preview it you know like in the full screen because that screen is still way too small sometimes I may want to see it in the full screen okay so there's a convenience there there's a lot of function in fact but I'm not going to go through all of them so <clears throat> uh, you may be asking me what is this you know this thing below here looks weird like something that you know don't exist in other CMS so let me just click on this one now for this website right the home page right actually uh, is dynamically driven so all the content right is pulled in from all the different uh, like different sec sections and based on certain filtering so you know if if you're a programmer and you uh, update websites uh, especially the home page uh, where there's all everything is dynamic right you find it's a big pain to actually uh, keep on changing the code inside just to change the logic so <clears throat> this thing right allows you to change the logic right now example if if I want to show like you know Xbox 360 news on the home page I just click this then it would actually show up Xbox 360 news and what if I want to change the order of you know how it's being <coughs> loaded I can actually just drag up and down to change the order of the logic this saves the programmer or at least you know whoever needs a programmer to change the person can actually do it himself rather than you know the, it saves a lot of uh, time and hassle for the programmer so <clears throat> um, this is actually in case you guys don't know this is the fourth generation programming methodology we call it declarative programming so you don't have to you know every time change the code to change the logic so okay <clears throat> uh, let's just move on so oh yeah there is um, like I mentioned about workflow right so what happened if I'm editing this right and, and another programmer comes in you know it happens when there's too many code you know so this this thing right uh, will automatically lock the this file when someone's editing like if I'm editing right the, the other programmer cannot do it because I've actually locked this out until I finish and save then it will actually automatically unlock <coughs> yeah so um, and and what if I want to know about whether if someone has changed a file you know maybe I'm actually waiting for the programmer I assign a task to the programmer and he's supposed to finish his job and, and then you know and inform me 
But you know, maybe he's in a rush, he's going for holiday, he'll just simply forget about informing me. So it's very easy, you can actually just click subscribe, right? Then you actually be informed. So you don't need to, like, you know, instruct someone to update you after he's done. <clears throat> okay, so, um, any questions so far? Is it too geeky, you know, too, like, Anyone know, have no idea what am I talking about? Do I have to clarify anything? Or no questions? It's really straightforward, right? Okay. I mean, don't be shy. Seriously, it's a, it's a user group, you know. Uh, I have a question. Uh, good. How about user permissions? Good. Very good question. Okay. User permission. This system, right, has a multi-level security access and ACL. So what I mean by ACL is that it's access control list that it allows you to set which user have access to CRUD, you know, create, read, update, and delete. Um, there's like multi-user access, multi-level uh, security access, right, is that there is a multi-level kind of, you know, uh, status, like there's the super admin, then there's the admin, then there's the editor, then, you know, the moderator and whatever, and there's quite a lot of it, but, uh, okay, so, and I want to show it to you guys also, if you guys um, don't mind, just hang in for a while. <clears throat> so, um, yeah. So, you can actually control which part of a section uh, is actually restricted. So, you know, sometimes you want, uh, like, maybe the designer not to actually touch certain section, like, you know, the login system or whatever security, which is totally not related with them, and, you know, in case someone accidentally mess it up and... Uh, Okay, let's plug this out. So, this allows you to actually change the security setting for specific category also. Um, it's a bit hard for me. Okay, I think I see from this screen. Okay, so, um, okay, wait. This, this, this place, right, is just for you to see the overall. But, um, Okay, so to change that, right, I think I'll just open up another screen so it's easier for me. <coughs> okay. This is the kind of like um, where you set the the controls, yeah. So I have the like the user rights management, so I can set whatever users the access, and I can add the types of access. Then uh, there's the category restriction also. <clears throat> so, um, like, I just, it's like you create a new group, you know, a, a group of users for this particular access type. Then, um, yeah. Okay, then the, there is this very, like, each specific user, right, you can grant them what, which part of the seg segment of the website they can access. All the services, right, actually. So, <clears throat> um, actually, for restriction, yeah, this is, just now I show you the category, right, there's overview of it, but this one, right, is where you can just, like, if I want to change this to restricted, right, I drag and drop over, then, it becomes restricted. <clears throat> um, so, so, user of certain level of security grant uh, rights, right, then can access this. And if you want to disable it, just click. Okay. Um, yeah. Let me just delete it. Okay. So, <clears throat> skip this. It's... Okay. Um, but, you know, a lot of people actually feedback to me that this website, they just find the color horrible, they don't like it. Okay, so not to worry, how, how do you actually change? You know, it's actually very painful to change uh, 
the, the look and feel, right? So for this, right, not to worry, it's actually quite straightforward. So you go to the admin panel, you click team, you click config, you go to the team. Maybe you don't like orange, fine. I can change to blue. You don't like blue? It's okay, that's the very cool gray. And, you know, for people who miss Christmas, there's the, this kind of like, you know, frozen kind of effect. So, you know, I haven't saved this, you know, so this is just for me to preview. It's very convenient that you can actually preview in real time rather than having to save and, then, hello, and show the whole world that you actually, uh, you know, have changed the team. So it's very, like, kind of fail safe. Yeah. So once I change it, you know, I kind of miss Christmas, so I'm just going to stick to this theme and show you guys how it looks like. I know it's still too, too much color, but, well. Okay, so I'm going to refresh, refresh this. So it's not just the, the front end that's going to change. So I'm going to show you how I change this, turn this off. So reload. See, the, the team has actually changed instantly. Okay, so I go back to just now, the CMSC is also completely changed. So it's not just the front end that's changing. Every single service section of the site right would change, including the CMS itself. And you may say that, oh, uh, you know, if you're going to update this, it's going to be very painful. But not to worry, make it actually very convenient also. So to, to let's say if you want to update the theme, right, it's actually very straightforward also. You go to theme upload. So from here, right, all you have to do, ah, uh, shoot, okay, sorry, my bad. There's a missing information. So yeah, but basically it's just a drag and drop. You just drag and drop uh, the, the theme package right then. Yeah, good. Okay, so, <clears throat> um, so yeah. There is also like, you know, all these sections, right, it's very, uh, it's all very technical. So if you ask uh, someone who just in, in charge of editorial, they will freak out looking at this because like, hey, where am I supposed to update anything? Uh, but later I'll move on to that one. Is anybody uh, in charge of updating content? Hopefully not. Okay, so um, there's a lot of these functionality. So like, you know, if, if Okay, I uh, was talking about editorial, right? So, you know, like when you want to write a story, then you have many chapters and you want to combine it together. It's sometimes very troublesome. Okay, don't, don't talk about content even. Let's say, you know, nowadays you have this single page website that just grows very long and then it's comprised of multiple blocks, right? So it becomes like, how do you actually, uh, you know, once you want to update, uh, it's very tedious because it's way too long and then you keep scrolling and look at it, where, where exactly is it? So this system, right, has a very convenient tool it's called, well, Stack Builder. This Stack Builder, right, basically, right, let's say, okay, let's say now I have something I want to create, like a single page block kind of thing, you know, a single page, uh, you know, with multiple blocks, right? I can actually do it here. So, okay, because the screen is very short, so it's very challenging for me also. Okay, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's somewhere here that I want to bring it over. Ah, uh, it's here, okay. So, you know, just now I just show you that um, how the front end, right, you can change it easily. What about the back end? You know how, how sometimes also you find it's very painful. In fact, it's more painful to change the back end rather than front end. So, good question is, uh, I mean, the solution for this one, right, is that Actually, everything can be changed. Anything that you see here right, can be changed with the CMS itself, even the CMS itself. So there's no need to go to the code, you know, open up a PHP file and then edit where you're supposed to update your content. So, um, yeah. Okay, I'm having a bit of a challenge here. You see, because you see the, the thing I want to drag over right is here. But my builder is gone because, you know, it's not in the same frame i mean okay so how, how do i solve this problem you know pretty tricky right okay not to worry since i have no way to access it from here i'm just going to go back to just now the stack builder <coughs> so stack builder i can always search 
So you know, just now I saw it was the name was CMS intro, right? Okay, it's um well okay. It's supposed to show up the list, but you know, this is just some technical constraint again. But okay, anyway, I I can still get it from here. So if if I I have these items here, right? So if I want to update the content, I drop it here. Okay, you, you see that? Actually, it's shown up here. <clears throat> so I can just drag and drop, right? All these templates are that I have created, right? And, and they would actually kind of form over here. Okay, so, so you know, it's very easy for you to create all these multiple items very easily. Let's drag and drop again. And then what if, you know, I decided to change, reorder it, right? It's very easy also. You know, I, I can click. Okay, there's some uh, cache constraint now uh, because uh, I've updated it, but it's just all this cache constraint that is not showing properly, but it's actually the real version actually is fully working, just that, you know, I can't demo everything here. But you know, you, you know what I mean, right? Like if you use WordPress. Okay, so then um, it, it's like, you know, very convenient for you because you can just type any of the names here and you actually show up. Of course, it's not showing up here, but yeah, you get what I mean. And then, okay, what about like, you know, that, that one you can't change the content because uh, you just, kind of stack everything up right like a burger so but if you want to have more freedom in changing something right because that one you you technically you're not changing anything you're just you know uh, combining everything but what if you want to have more freedom you want to edit something right that gives you more you know more more control so this one right is actually the whisk builder so the whisk builder is something where you can add many elements like you know, uh, HTML elements like the header and tables and columns and even free box. Okay, so, you know, I, I drag here, I can, I drag another free box here and I can actually move it freely around. I can resize it. So this, this editor, right, uh, gives you like 100% freedom to control whatever you want to change. It comes with the details of, you know, the elements, properties of the each, each element, the HTML element. And um, what about form, you know? So you want to add forms, you can just drag and drop and form, you know, is, is will appear automatically. So any, any form elements is all built in here. Uh, upload, text view, buttons. So what about video? So video also, you can actually add them here. You can add uh, native video or YouTube video and even audio. Of course, not to mention this image. So when I add a... Okay. Adding video is a bit challenging. Okay, but anyway. Um, because there's too much things on the screen, so it's a bit hard for me to update it at this point in time until I delete them. Okay, so, um, but you know, if you just, a person who just do a lot of forms, you can actually use this also, form editor. So, you, you click this, this um, I'm using an existing form. So, this form editor gives you full control over how your forms should look like and it's, it's more structured. So, if I want to um, add, Input, you know, I can just drag and drop. So, what if I want to change the order of it? No problem also, I can just reorder it. And if I want to add a new few, I click, click add few. Then you can actually just select whatever few you prefer. Input, checkbox, text area, upload, you know, reset buttons, whatever. Okay, so... <clears throat> um, Does anybody have any questions so far?
Is it still? Yes. Yeah, correct. It's actually uh, MySQL, but it can be any any database that you know PHP support. So it doesn't. You don't have to stick to MySQL. You can run on AWS, you know, uh, or whatever database that you prefer. Yeah. Okay. So what about like um, you know? There's always this. Okay, just now I was talking about the editorial part, right? Because all this is too geeky and the editor will just freak out looking at the whole thing where you don't know where to update anything. So let me just show you where is the... Okay, this is for um, editor. So it's called the like article manager. I should actually open it up in another screen because so it's a bit small. Okay, so the article manager lets the editor, right, who does not know anything about programming and and just want to focus on the content this is the the editor right that you know all the content is just related to the to the editor and if you want to add a content right you just click on the plus sign then you can just add whatever content that the person wants so you can add like you know flash uh, YouTube and a lot of other things images content so this is a very uh, like full fledged editor is has you can even customize the editor also. It's like you know it's like a plug in kind of system. So you, if you're a programmer then you can just modify and add new buttons along the way. So um but you know what if um you know I I don't know how to create a web page right? How how do I actually start go about? Because this thing is so complicated that you know you don't know where to start from. Okay, so um I'm not touching too much about the editorial content because you know nobody's an editor here. So you know about creating web page, right? We all know sometimes it's quite a challenge to even start. You know, you need something to motivate you. So you go to click import, right? Um, no, sorry. Go to click clone a page. Sorry, I know this color is a bit bad, but you know, in, we are running short of time, so I'm not gonna switch it back. Just bear with me the color, okay? Thanks. So I paste the URL right, and click start import, right? So just now, you know, that was the page that I wanted it to look like my my new site, right? So you see, it actually, it's actually captured the page. It's all here, you know. It looks like the page that I just saw just now. In fact, it feels like and move like the the site. And you know what? Not only I can just see, I can just change it also change whatever I see here so um, you know for those who are like you know you just want to make it easy for yourself then you can always use this and and then uh, you know as a developer you always have a staging environment then you have the UAT environment you know some have then you have production then you know, some have a development server. There's so many servers, all the different range. How do you actually uh, update? It's very troublesome. So you know, now the trend is what you use CI, CD, and it's very complicated. You need a team of DevOps. It's just kind of like sometimes you wish it would be simpler. So this thing, right, is kind of to simplify this process also. How do you actually update um, a website? You know, on on the let's say you, this one is like you know on your local. But you want to update it on the staging. How do you do that? Everyone knows it's very troublesome, right? Because you got to find all the files, then you can find all the updated database, then you're going to upload, and then you know import into the database. It's way too tedious, right? So this system, right, allows you to do it very easily. First step is that you actually yes, five minutes. Okay, no worries. This is the well, kind of you know the. Well, kind of the interesting part. Lah. So, <clears throat> yeah, how do you do it, right? Is that you first, you back it up first. You need to back up your files. So I click this. I export this, right? I can, one click only, you will export the file. Okay, so this entire site, right, is now here at the bottom. So then you go to your live, uh, your staging environment, right? Then you go to import, yeah. Sorry, I can't see the word I know, but it's import. Then you just drag and drop the file that you just downloaded, right? And up here, 
and then you're done. Simple as that. But okay, what if you know you are a super like a programmer, you are managing 100 websites. Now that's gonna be a killer, right? Because you're gonna like how in the world I have 100 websites? It's way impossible, right, to update, right? Let's say your boss tell you tomorrow you must finish. Don't worry, this thing you can finish it in well in a day, yeah, or less actually. So how do you do it? Actually, there is a massive import. You can just do it, right? Import everything. And you select the website that you want to import from. I'm trying to show it to you. Um, yeah, just hang on. So there's no need for all this complicated process, the CI, CD. Yes, I know it's even more complicated that process where it does a lot of other things, but let's just put it this way, you know, sometimes life can be simpler. Yeah, so you go to click global deploy, right? <coughs> then you just need to drag and drop, right? The file that you have, you know, backup. You, and then you're done, you know. Let's say you select the, the websites that you want to update from. Okay, so um, last one, last one. Okay, I know. <clears throat> okay, um, what did I miss? Okay, so if, let's say, you know, you don't want to back up the whole entire website and then update on the, on the, on the server, everything, because, you know, you only actually updated a few files only. So how do you actually do it? Very easy also, you can go to here. You can select based on last updated or when it was created. Then you click you click the files that you want. Sometimes it's all these files that I've just updated only. Okay, then you go to, ah, oh, okay, sorry. Super scroller, scroll faster than I can scroll. Okay, so, you know, you go to export and that's it. It would export exactly what you want and then you just drag and drop update on the live side or production side or staging whatever your server your preference so okay that's it uh, thank you